race is like, what the fuck did you accomplish? Like, you, no, why, why, why somebody be proud of their race? Like yeah. your parents had sex. You didn't earn it. You yeah, yeah. Wait, your parents had, I've heard you say that. So yeah. my parents had sex in Baghdad. They did. Yeah, yeah that, that's that's how it or happened. Babylon, like, the reason yeah. why I had my race is pure accident. Like mm-hmm. I didn't choose my race. I didn't yeah. choose my nationality. I just choose to be a male. Yeah. Because you like I'm proud of being a male. Like what the hell did yeah. I do yeah. to be pride? Same as pride. Yeah. Huh? Same as unearned pride is the cause of some of the biggest genocides. And well, that's yeah. Yeah. Your, to your identity Disasters. point too. But, you know, this is identity. But I wish like we get it's over this like I don't, like, it, I don't think we're gonna get over it. I think it's getting worse. Well, because of so. the backlash of the failure of the left in addressing. I mean, if you get like, I'm not advocating for open borders and canceling. Oh no! But yeah, that's yeah. climate change. Haven't you heard? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I assume some of them are good people. But uh, <laughs> well, climate change, uh, if uh, that could be a solution to all of this. Yeah, that, that <laughs> yeah. will end us. Yeah. I mean, that, that doesn't discriminate <laughs> based on race. That's for sure. Or religion. Or religion. Or yeah. sex. Uh, or socioeconomic class. Uh, yeah. Actually, actually, but poor people get affected more by climate change. They will. Uh, well, poor people affected everyone. by everything the most. The poorest rich people, because if you're rich, you can always escape. Even so maybe a black hole. Separate. A black hole would be less discriminatory. But that's racist. Right? <laughs> <laughs> black hole is racist. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but yeah, I mean, I mean, I really wish that we. I mean, obviously, there is now the rise of the far right and nationalism, and especially in Europe and all over. Uh, but I really hope that people will wake up of like uh, sure. over this kind of nationalism nonsense and religious mm-hmm. nonsense. And I, I think I think do think of not nationalism as a sort of religion. Yeah, it's a uh, second cousin. Uh, to the, love your country is one thing, but to think that you're more superior than others because you were born in this country, that's a problem. Yeah. Like when you are thinking in like in the Muslim context, like we are the God God sent you as the best people the world has ever known. Mm-hmm. And also with the Jewish people they have the chosen thing. Uh I mean, everyone in the Middle East thinks that they're the chosen people, mm-hmm. which is the biggest irony of all ironies. Yeah. Is that if you ask anyone in the Middle East, and they all think they're the God chosen people. In other words, like God is very sucks at real estate. He doesn't know <laughs> how to how to give the property, and uh, and then yeah, we have like lots of conflicts, which are like mostly a merge of nationalistic religious hate, because um, yeah. they're both based upon. Yeah. Mostly yeah, irrational a, ideas. Well, I mean, this national, this nationalistic uh, thing is religion has used nationalism. Nationalism has used religion. I mean, you've got like the whole jihadist thing is extremely it's, nationalist. Uh, mm-hmm. Zionism yeah. is obviously nationalist. They, even uh, patriot people say, well, patriotism is okay, but you know, nationalism is a problem. But if you, if patriotism didn't have an element of nationalism inherent in it, you could be an Iraq. You could be an American patriot. But well, like but in the Western be. countries, I think, well, when I see it from Denmark, also in other countries, like here with Trump, it's like make America great again. He's the only political force. That's only the only political kind of force is like a nationalist, populist movement. Also in other countries, who actually take this threat seriously? From my point of view, do you understand? Do you understand? Like you understand? He's the first extremity. president in the Western world who said that Islamic terrorism is but he took it, Islamic. But I, quote, I, I want to quote just Yuval Noah Harari here. I think that terrorism is a serious problem, but in all honesty, I think that they have already won. Like the fact that when I flew yeah, here, the all of us have to take our shoes off. I almost missed my flight on Easter weekend because everybody had to take their shoes off and their belts off. I was having that same so thought. Yuval Noah Harari, who's a great um, you know, Israeli professor, he, he's the author of the book Sapiens. He gave this analogy. He's like, when you have a bull in a china shop, terrorism isn't the bull that destroys the china shop. Terrorism is a little fly buzzing in the ear of the bull. It just buzzes and buzzes until the bull goes crazy and goes and destroys the entire china shop. Because the, these terrorists are very small. They're driving cars into crowds. That's all they got right now, right? So there's so what happens is that um, but that's they what capture it takes to, to scare fear, a nation. But that's that's what it is. They capture. They want to scare a nation. They want the nation to <clears throat> imagine the worst that can happen, Cow them, right? Cow. And which is probably much worse than the real, the reality. Yeah. And then they want them to overreact. Yeah. And the moment we've done that, 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 that's exactly why they're winning, right? So I think that uh, the idea that the nationalists and everything, they're taking this threat uh, seriously like the way it's supposed to be. There's a Netflix documentary right now on Hitler that was made in the 
around 1977, 79. I can't remember the year. But I think everybody should watch that because the parallels are uncanny. I don't think Donald Trump is Hitler, so I just must say that. I don't think any of these guys are. But I, I don't think he can ever be as successful as Hitler because uh, Hitler... But, but why are you con but, con but, but, comparing but him to Hitler? I because don't... I think the nationalist yeah. movement... I'm not comparing him to Hitler because honestly I think Hitler was much more competent. He's evil. I'm, I'm serious. But but He's I mean, evil. he doesn't it's hate right. Jews. He doesn't hate Muslims. He, I, I think mean, Trump got it. He didn't either. But let me an Hitler unfair comparison. Said, but I think I think Trump. I think this focus on terrorism is, it, you know, the cost of religion is way more than terrorism. And I think a lot of people, when they right. talk about yeah. Islam and the cost of Islam, they focus on terrorism, even though a lot more people are getting hurt by Islam and faith in general. Yeah. Every day, even without terrorism, and the thing is that if the the focus on terrorism is because when it only we, we only start paying attention to Islam and it's and it's how ridiculous it I is. I think it's when because it, you don't live in Europe. No, I'm sorry, no, because no, in no, Europe, no, if you add up if you add up all the victims of yeah. terror attacks in the West, it's not going to add up to all the all the victims of Islam under Islamic countries. No, Muslims of not. And, uh, Muslims but that's why they're quiet. That's why mm. nobody in the no. Muslim world but, is But the thing up. is that if terrorism to the West stops, people will stop paying attention to Islam altogether, even though a lot of people are living under Islamic the regimes. The roots will still be there, and, right? Yeah, the roots sure. will still so be there. There's not going to be more woke marchers once the terrorists... Well, you have to away. zoom out. It's that's not it. just... Terrorism, really we say that I, it's, we shouldn't deny that right. terrorism has to do with Islam, but right, that terrorism is rooted in Islam, jihad is rooted in Islam, but Islam is also rooted in the idea that a lot of us, including Christians, think that faith, believing things without evidence, exactly. is a good thing. And they're teaching this in schools. They're teaching all of their kids this that faith is a good thing. So you can't if you are a if you're a Christian believer who thinks that oh faith is a virtue, and you're criticizing terrorism, it's it's actually just as contradictory as someone who says no jihad and Islam are. I, I get See, the so fact that religion... can I just can I just comment on yeah. this? Little? So basically, based on you know when you when you target terrorism, it's like you have this poisonous tree with poisonous flowers, and you. Sometimes it has this poison power. You're just cutting the flowers every once in a while that you see that. But but the root, the faith, is that you're ignoring that, and you know this is going. This tree is going to get spread if you don't target the actual problem. Because the thing is, when you believe in things without evidence and you just accept claims, the cost of it is eventually going to spread from somewhere else. Even though if you're just you know fixing this problem here, fixing that problem here, I replacing do agree, one. I do agree that it, it is a long-term fight of ideas, battle of the ideas that we have to win in the long term. But the reason why we cannot, I cannot go back to Iran and you can, and we cannot go back and, you know, say these things in other Muslim countries. No, they're going to kill us. They're going to kill us. And and when when Salman Rushdie, he was the first one who got a fatwa and then, you know, people started like thinking real hard about writing anything about Islam. Um, in Denmark, you know, the journalists, but we are the writers. We are, we are not. are very afraid about. But you gotta remember, Jimmy are, Carter wrote an op-ed against someone on because he said that he criticized the religion. The religion should be respected. Well, that's to Ali's that point, right? You have to have to give it thing. deference. It has to be all it has time. to be zoomed out. But the toxicity of this, like, of course. supposing you go out, there is a, um, you go out and you destroy all of ISIS in Iraq and Syria. It doesn't right. Is that is that the threat to the U.S. or is the threat to the people who are being convinced by Anwar Abbas? The terrorist Al threat, threat is the homegrown terrorists. Yeah. So you have to fight. What you have to do is you have to fight the, the what's happening on the internet, the way these people are being recruited. You can destroy ISIS with all the bombs you want to. That's still going to live, and that is actually not the territorial ISIS is not a threat. No. See, the main I victims, of, the, main the, victims of the main victims of Islam, the main victims of Islam. The main victims of Islams are not just are not ex-Muslims, are not Christians, are not atheists. The main victims of Islams are Muslims, because they don't just live under a tyranny of a government; they live under a, a self-made tyranny of their own mind, right? So even if Muslims are not killing anybody, even if not they're not hurting anybody, even if there's no violence in the name of Islam, if people are living, sacrificing their life here for the next one, they're still victims. Even if they don't kill a single person, and they, even even if there is no terrorism, I will still fight Islam for the sake of Muslims, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah for, sure. So that's why I say. I mean, 
of course we have terrorism here, but like the Sunni Shia war is going to, I mean, has already. But even if it's no violence, and it's not gonna end. I don't think it's gonna end. The Sunni Shia war is not gonna end until like it either reforms, like Islam reforms, or they don't believe it anymore. And also, I mean, it's getting more and more complicated as time passes by, right? The more these wars in Syria and Iraq and, and. Iran and Saudi Arabia and, and Qatar and all these countries pumping millions of dollars for this war to continue. Mm. I don't see it ending anytime soon because now there is so much revenge. Oh, you killed my brother. Oh, you killed, you raped my sister. Oh, you did this. And this hate is bubbling up. So yeah. eventually, and this hate is not going to just go within a generation. I mean, there are people who lost tens of their relatives to ISIS and who is quote unquote the radical Sunni militia and those yeah. others who lost their children to Quds Force from Iran and others and Hezbollah who also have revenge. There uh, has to be an intellectual and I, 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 yeah. identity, a new a new identity for Muslim. I think there it is a Muslim identity crisis uh, happening, right? Yes, we enjoy us. Join us. Yes, we come and join us. It's more like to get it to more like Europe that it's gonna turn or so. continue because I, I see that the rise of identity politics, the rise of the conservatism, uh, all of that is gonna lead to more segregation and more. Yeah, I'm not very optimistic, uh, but I think that it's still America has the best chance because you have immig immigration policies that are better than Europe's. And it's also a big country, so the yeah. thing is. Muslims are very spread out across the country to the way that they are not very ghettoized. Immigration but, policy yeah. is not going to matter when ideas can travel through borders. Yeah, but like, but speaking of ideas, I mean, if you let Muslims more into big cities, that the way that they are surrounded by different people, then they're going to encounter different ideas. But when you put them in a one place in a suburb of Belgium, in which all your but neighbors you are Muslim. But you don't put them there. It's that's yeah, it. I mean, so they put them there there. themselves. Yeah. I mean, I was, I, I grew up in a ghetto. I was, my parents were trying to get out of there. I, and I was talking to all the other kids in the ghetto, and they no, nobody else is trying to get out of here. They like it there. And this there's so like much cr criminal stuff going it's like on. like that and woman you were just interviewing, the Pakistani woman yeah. who lived in Little Pakistan, and everybody was from Pakistan. Did you listen to that? I yeah, I listened to that. Yeah. I, I, was, I was born and raised in Canada, so I think I look at this differently than Faisal does, because I was one of those people, and I know that everybody wanted a ghetto. We wanted to live together. We wanted our separate schools. Our families didn't want us interacting with the non-Muslims. Our families didn't want us going to school with the non-Muslims. Our families didn't want us picking up liberal values from the country that we were living in. The aim was to protect us from all that. So again, like I said yesterday, it doesn't matter how much your host country wants you to integrate. Well, yeah. The concept behind the US is the concept of the melting pot and everybody should have the same rules. Uh, and the left, I mean, I mean, the political correctness have not really made it as strongly in the United States as it has in Europe. I think America in general is more right wing compared yeah, to Europe. Yeah, yeah. And well, America is more religious too. And, and so it's religious too, and there is the kind of the Jew, Judeo Christian people balancing out the Muslim people. But the way. Democrats are going, yeah, in my yeah. eyes, they're going crazy. So they're Democrats going... now are going towards the direction of the European left that caused the. It's what's going happening to, in Europe right now. It's going to kill them eventually. Yeah, yeah. Well, I was going to make a point about what you were talking about with immigration. I find it's interesting that it seems like sometimes when people come to the United States, the Muslim identity is something that's more important when yes. they're here than it was yes. when they were back home. 100%. So people that I know, they wear the cover, but then I see pictures of them when they lived in Libya or yeah, Iraq, yeah. Or no cover, Western clothes, but here all of a sudden it becomes yeah. this way of expressing and part of the community and you yeah. recognize each other and you feel maybe... And support each other. Right, that's where I was yeah. going to go. You feel maybe isolated, it's a new country, you don't maybe speak the language, so this is a way for you yeah, yeah. to Connect. feel comfortable and then it just and becomes that's, this that's insular a, thing. That's a typical human reaction. Of course. So when I was an expat, I... Here in Can when I was in Canada, I barely celebrated Canada Day. But when I was an expat living overseas, oh my god, we would go crazy on Canada mm -hmm. Day, right? Like maple syrup, Canadian flags, <laughs> mm -hmm. because exactly what you're describing. Yeah. And we would all support.
support each other. People that I would never be friends with in Canada, if they're mm -hmm. my neighbors, I'd probably ignore them. Uh -huh. But if I'm in yeah. a foreign country and I meet another Canadian, it was like, oh my God. You know, Americans like, yeah, are like that. Yeah. You meet them yeah. in Europe and they're like, you're American, I'm American, yeah. we're both American. Yeah. 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 They're yeah. so yeah. excited yeah. to you. Know? Yeah. That's humans, they yeah. all do that, right? Yeah. So, but then what happens when they come here and they're Muslims, like say there's very few Libyans, there's very few Egyptians, there's very few Moroccans, there's very few Syrians, whatever. But if you connect us all by saying we're all Muslim, all of a sudden our community is huge mm -hmm. yeah. and we have networks everywhere. If I want to buy a car, I know a Muslim car salesman. If I want to, you know, get into this university, I know this Muslim that can be my mm -hmm. supervisor. So we, yeah. you all of a sudden Muslim have this dentists, huge like a, yeah. Muslim yeah. Full, dentist. Yeah. It's a full system. Yeah. Full system completely. When I left Islam, I left that whole network. Yeah, yeah. That was probably one of the most difficult parts. But it's understandable. It's it's religion. Religion. It doesn't it's have to be a support. problem if you're not actually, I mean, I mean, the you, Chinese do it too, but nobody's one of the Mormons. Yeah. The Mormons but they're, all humans. But are, like, yeah. the loy, they're, but the, prob the, the problem thing is, is when that they are the loyal the to the Sharia law. Yeah. It has nothing to do with they're the country. They're loyal to the state of whatever country. For instance, when there was a terror attack in Copenhagen, the terrorists, after shooting at meeting I was at, he went to a, an internet cafe where he sat and the word is that everybody knew who he was and what he had done. Nobody said anything. Yes, they helped but him. Behavior. Yeah. And this is the problem with, you know, it's okay to, you know, want to be, I also want, you know, like meeting other Iranians and, yeah. and talking to them and we have, it's called Masabzi. Yeah, <laughs> we have shared uh, experiences and everything, culture and so on. But the problem begins when you don't have any loyalty to the nation that you're living in. Yeah. But you're not going to. But you're not going to convince them to, uh, you know, integrate. But based on, you know, sticks and carrots, mm -hmm. you know, that's not going to work. The only thing that is going to work is to just question the entire faith. You're not going to be like because if you believe in Islam, why would I abandon God's law, the God's way of life, for this, you know, heretical way, way yeah, of life? Yeah. You, you know, the government could put as many uh, six and cats as they want. This is like, I, I, who, who do I care more about? Punish God's punishment or your government's punishment? Yeah. Obviously, God's punishment. Mm -hmm. So if I don't go to the root of the problem and address the root of the problem, all these policies and immigration and states... But, we, but, 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 but there's an inherent I'm, contradiction in that, though. Remember that Kuwaiti blogger was talking about, so yes, that's true, but when you look at reality, all these refugees aren't going to Mecca to solve their problems problem right they're coming to the west yeah. well, but, so they right, look to, to god for some things but they still the want to the, the right to He's not a libertarian when you give the government the right oh. not to just decide what's hurt, hurt us but actually what's ethical and what's not ethical that's you, dangerous well no, they, do, dangerous. they do already when the government when government bans weight it makes it a crime no, they're making not, an ethical yeah, right. no, 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 exactly. like, criminal yeah. and ethical are two different things the government well, is no, no, it's no, not the different gov things. government's responsibility. Uh -huh. For example, if you cheat on your wife, the government has no right to come and arrest you. If you rape somebody, you're you're hurting somebody yeah. physically. That's the government's responsibility, right? If you, if I lie to my girlfriend, does the government come say, send me a sign? No, the government has no right to tell me what's ethical yeah, and what's but, not ethical. But, 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 uh, ideology, but there are automates, some ethical things but, yeah. in, in law. Yes, yeah, yes, they are. The they long they time, are some. The longest time. Yeah, exactly. Stuff like that. dildos are against the law. Yeah. Where? Right. See, yeah. <laughs> what, a, what country can I making, not go she's to? She's making the point that law and ethics are not the same oh. thing. If law and ethics were the same thing, that means in Iran, apostasy is like me saying anything against Islam, that's unethical. Because law doesn't define mm -hmm. ethics. Law and ethics sometimes are sometimes collide, sometimes they don't, right? Yeah, yeah. And if you give, the thing is that yeah, government, government, the governments change, change. The governments the change. If you give governments so much authority to tell me what's moral, then if the government goes, changes, their changes mind. I think then it's, you're making a godlike government that no, eventually will No, but I think it's go, really right? important for Western countries to to state what the, what their values are yes. and say they, these are our values. And if this is being a citizen in my country in Denmark, it's, it's not a human right. If you yeah. want to be a citizen in in Denmark, you have to uh, abide by the rules and you have to be a democrat. And if you it's don't not abide a human by right. the rules and if you break the law, then you get prosecuted just like anybody else. Yeah, but you can't tell them that you also need to 
show up at these events and also of eat this no, kind of food no, not. and not, not listen to this kind of music. Like yeah. <laughs> I know, no, no, no. but that's what integration means. Integration means like you also consider their other way of like, yeah, obviously if you commit a crime, the government is going to stop you. But they you. don't. That's the issue. Yes, I agree with you on that They part. don't because they say, oh, it's okay, they're just Muslims. No, that's dumb. That's we dumb. We have to teach them. They don't know. That's dumb. I, we agree with like, that. On that like issue. refugees coming with a 14-year-old 14, 14 wife and everybody, the, the, the head of the child the organization in Denmark was like, Oh, we have to look at their cultural, their cultural background. No. Yeah. You're the head of children's organization. Yeah. What yeah. are you talking that's about? The but no, that, that's, isn't that true? We all agree. On, I mean, that's the some, some no. that, problem. That's, no. Yeah, but we all agree that that's a crime and the government should stop it, right? But we're talking about going a little bit further right now. That we're going about. Let's no, fix I mean, this we, first. I know. We, <laughs> me and you agree on that, right? Yeah. I'm just saying, and me and you agree mm -hmm. that. Going for any further than that mm. is not the government's responsibility. Mm. It's people like us' responsibility by our books, by our podcasts, mm. by reaching out to the Muslim community mm. and providing them an alternative. I don't think the kid, the stick and carrot, should go anything farther than crimes. You know, when it comes to way of life, you can show people an option, yeah. but the but, government can't come in with penalties to way of instance, life. Anything why did Obama crime. not consult with Majid Nawaz, with Faisal? Instead, they consulted with Muslim Brotherhood. This is what I'm talking about. I think okay. it's ignorance, to it's, be honest. I they think you're right. Said, I, I, they said, we want a Muslim to advise us. How do we find a Muslim? Oh, I know. Oh, look, Muslim, Muslim Brotherhood. Brotherhood. <laughs> To be fair, to be no, fair, I, I, they're I, the more, they're the I, most organized. I mean, how organized? Yeah, are, that's are, true. Are, are, we we how, how big is our audience? They was, need to uh, go with people. We're not actually. No, but it's also because they call themselves Muslims, and they're against Daesh. Is they're against the ISIS? Mm. So therefore, they're better. They're the moderate. So, you know. Well, I think part of the issue is people don't yeah. even yeah. 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 realize yeah. that. Yeah. Yeah your average person, that there's someone who could be an ex-Muslim. Like, all Muslims are the same, right? I, I need a Muslim, oh, moderate. okay, come over here, oh, done, I talked to a Muslim. Yeah. You know? I, mean, I, think I, just, also I just, don't I forget just I need to comment the, on the moderate for a second, yeah. on the moderate Muslim Brotherhood, because Saudi Arabia has deemed them a terrorist organization. Saudi Arabia, one of the most terrorist organizations on the planet, the ISIS, has deemed them. them. Yeah. That's right, the political <laughs> ISIS yeah. has deemed Muslim Brotherhood a political organization. Meanwhile, so in the United States of America, they are calling calling them a moderate organization. Nobody calls Iran moderate. No, That's no, the atheists are, atheism is considered an act of terrorism. Yes. But now yeah, even Iran is a, a, an ally, kind of, right? Yeah. Because they're fighting it's ISIS. Confused. It's ignorance. Yeah. Now, well, I to think, be, I think to it's more no, no, complicated. I think that yeah. the foreign policy is said like, money and money mm -hmm. that the United States is allied with Qatar and Saudi Arabia. And Qatar is the main financer of the Muslim Brotherhood. And the, in order for you to, because I think the US foreign policy has always been focused on quote unquote stability. That's the reason why yeah, some, of sure, them, sure. some of them still support Assad. That's the most logical thing to yeah. do for a country. That's